that's hundred. So when you guys open up Logic Pro 11 for the first time, you might see this, the demo projects and some of these templates that they give you. So what we're gonna do is go right into a new project and we're gonna hit choose. Now we're gonna have a couple of things pop up here. So we have our MIDI instrument, which is our musical instrument digital interface. All this means is we can play virtual instruments using this. So we have our pattern. This allows us to do our step sequencer building. Next, we have the new session players, which is an AI generated assistant for us to be able to generate ideas. Next thing we have here is our audio. So this allows us to get what's coming from the real world into the digital world. Once again, we have a drum machine here that we're gonna use for this example. So we're gonna start with a MIDI instrument. And what I like to do is just start with the default patch. And I like to do this because one, it lets me know if I have sound or not, if I have connection with my MIDI controller or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create. Now, what I like to do immediately is plug in a MIDI controller. So right now I'm using the Keystation 49 ES. So let's just see if we have sound here. Looks like we do. So what we're gonna do is come over here and click Logic Pro. And then we're gonna go to our settings and then we're gonna come over here to general. Now, the first thing you want to do as soon as you load up Logic Pro is go ahead and come all the way over to the right. We're gonna to go to advance. Now, when you get it, it's gonna be unchecked, which is enable complete features. Check that, and now we have all of our features. As you can see, customization and control, editing, audio, mixing, and your score editor. Excellent. Now that we have that all out the way, what we're going to do now is set up our audio. So I'm currently using the Behringer X32. So what we're going to do is come over here to our audio now, and we're going to select our input and output devices. All we have to do is come over here to where it says input device, click that and select your interface. And we're going to do the same exact thing for our outputs. Excellent. Once you've done that, if you don't have any issues, then we can move on to where it says right below that our buffer size. Now our buffer size is based on samples. So the current rate I have it at is at 128. And all this means is this gives us the buffer size for our MIDI instruments or our playback. So when we play our keyboard, we don't wanna click it in here. Boom, boom, we wanna hear it right away. So we need to lower our buffer size to about 128 to get the best performance out of our instruments. Now, when we're mixing and depending on your computer capacity and your preferences in there, you may be able to even go down to 64. Now, if you're working with your average computer, you know, ranging from about 16 gigs of RAM, maybe even eight gigs of RAM, then you might wanna keep your buffer size from 128 and bump it up to 1024 or 512 when you begin mixing so you can get the best performance out of your playback. Now, if you're really serious about taking your Logic Pro experience to the next level and beyond, then my Logic Pro Masterclass is gonna be the solution for you because I take all of these concepts, mixing, mastering, sounds, automation, and so much more in time and care into this class to make it easy and digestible for you to understand. Now, I completely understand if you're a beginner and you're trying to figure out logic and trying to figure out how to record, I've also included chapters for the ultimate beginner where you know nothing about recording. You will still be able to follow along. So if you want to enroll in that course, I'll leave that tag below for you guys so you can have access to it. Now, the next thing we want to do getting started is make sure that we have downloaded our additional sounds and content. So what we want to do is go back up here to Logic Pro and then we wanna come over here to where it says sound library. And we can come over here to where it says open sound library manager. Click that. Excellent. 
Once you've done that, you'll see all of these additional instruments and content that you can download. So up here, we have where we are currently, which is our sound library. And the shortcut for that is the letter Y. Excellent. Right next to that, we have our inspector. And the inspector shows us our channel strip, which is this right here. And so if we explore this, we have where we're going to quantize and edit our performance over here. Then we have an even more menu where we can actually delay, add some dynamics, gate time. Now, what we have right below that is the master library up here or the master plugin search. So this is where we can save presets, save channel strip setting, all the different things, copy it, remove it, bypass, all of these different things are gonna be in this master area here. Then just below that, we have our EQ. So we can add some equalization. This is a plugin, a stock plugin. Excellent. Then we have our MIDI effects, and this is where we can add some arpeggios, a chord generator, modifier. Now we have our actual instrument that we're currently on. It's going to be right below the MIDI effects, which is studio bass. And this is what the, the plugin looks like. <laughs> That's where our instrument is. Then we have our bass amp plugins, or basically our channel strip of plugins. This is what we would call a chain, a plugin chain, which is one plugin coming out of one plugin into the next plugin. So you see we have a compressor here. Then we went into a bass cabinet or amp designer. So if we click at an empty space down here, now we can see our menu pop up and we can start with these filters, which is our amps, delay, distortion. And then we have our third party plugins, which basically are our VSTs. Now they're gonna be organized by our vendors here. And you can see when we click the power button, they gray out. And then when we click the power button again, they turn blue. So what I like about Logic is we can just take our mouse and just slide right down and slide right back on up to turn them off and on, which is really nice. All right, next we have our sins. So this is where we're going to apply like a reverb. So let's go to our keyboard here. And let's say we want to add some reverb. Typically that's going to be on bus two here. And you hear that reverb coming in. See that? And then we turn it down and it's dry again. Next, we have our pan pot here. All right, we can pan all the way 64% to the left, 64 to 65% to the right. Now, Logic, for some reason, they have different pan laws. So I would prefer a true pan law from the beginning. So what you have to do to turn this to true panning you have to right click on that pan pot and change it to stereo pan. Now we have a true pan from left to right. Now we can see that we're panning 100% to the left here, which is technically negative 64%. And if we move this up, click up and drag up and move all the way over to the right, you see we have the 63% over to the right. Then last but not least, we have our actual fader, which we can turn up and down. Now we have our locators, our transport, which is really, really important. So we have our rewind, which is going to be comma. Then we have our forward, which is gonna be period. So what that means is we can start and go over to wherever we would like using these two shortcuts. So you won't see go back to the top when you're already at the uh, top of the arrangement. But once you move over, then boom, that new icon pops up. This is going to be our back to the top. Go to the left locator. Then we have our play. So you can click this. Then you can hit stop. So when we hit play, the stop icon pops up now, that's new. Boom, all right, and then if we go back to the top, we have our stop button comes back. So the shortcut for play and stop is spacebar. 
see that? Now what we're gonna do is go over to our record button. Now to record, it's just simply the letter R, which I did earlier. So let's say I wanted to add some drums to this. All I have to do is hit record and add more. All right, extremely convenient. Now what we have here is our cycle, which is C for cycle. So if you hit the letter C, boom, you'll see this yellow marker basically to be able to stretch across our arrangement. This basically says, hey, I want this to loop up until whatever point we choose. We can click the region and hit Command and U and it will instantly bring that cycle loop to where we are in the arrangement. Next, we have our locators here. So we have our current playhead position, then we have our beats. So our beats per minute or our tempo is set to 120. Now we can speed this up and slow it down by just clicking and dragging up or dragging down. Or you can just type in whatever you want. So let's say we want this to be 89 and hit enter. We're at the time signature of 4-4. So if you want to do odd meter, if you're one of those guys, you're advanced, feel free to get in the 7-8, 12-8. Then we have our key signature, all right? Then we have our count in, which you heard before we started recording, it gave us one, two, three, four, and then began to record, all right? Then we have our metronome click, which allows us to hear the metronome, not just when we're recording. So just in playback, we can hit the letter K, hit the letter K again. All right, so you can click this icon for that, or you can hit the letter K. All right, so now that you guys are familiar with these tools and what they do, let's use them in context in basic recording. So the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust this menu, and I'm gonna change this to custom. That's the first step. And then we need to make sure that we're recording at the proper sample rate and all the things. So we're gonna go over here to option P. Then we're gonna come over here to audio and then we're gonna change this to 48 Hertz. Perfect, now we're at our higher quality. Now we're ready to roll. Let's get some drums in the building. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace this. So change it from the classic electric piano and we're gonna get out of this library by clicking where it says Vintage Electronic Piano. We're gonna click that and then let's pull up some drums. Okay, perfect. Then what I'm gonna do is go to the producer kits. So we're gonna come over here to where it says all sounds and then we're gonna change this. So let's go ahead and get the beat tape. All right, go to electronic kit and then let us go to chopped up this is a good decent kit to use for stock to catch a vibe then the next thing we're going to do is get the tempo of where we are so we can start at 90. we're going to hit the letter k now for our metronome we're going to hit the space bar to preview what this tempo sounds like so let's do that all right now let's go ahead and hit the r button and this is going to start recording for us so we're going to get that four bar count in so one two, three, four, and then you're gonna start recording. Here we go. Now what we're gonna do is quantize this. So what this means is we're going to take all of the beats that are slightly off and lock them to the grid to where it sounds efficiently or or shall I say correct. Here's the quantize ready for you. Quantize this to the greatest value. So that's going to be a 16th note. So we have here, let's click that. And let's turn the metronome on. You see how it's dead on the beat now. Now what we can do as a shortcut to quantize this to a 16th note is hit the letter Q. So we're gonna do Option, Command, and N. And this time we're gonna grab a bass. So we're gonna to go to Empty Channel Strip this time, hit Create. Now we're going to go back to All Sounds. Then we're gonna come over here to Bass and let's check out the Dance Clean. Oh, 
Okay, so let's build on this and let's add this baseline. So let's hit the record button. There we go. Now, this time we're going to do something different. We're going to come over here to audio. And this time we're going to do a uh, mic or line. And as we discussed before, for me, it's going to be on channels 13 and 14. Now, if you're recording your vocal and you have it on channel one in your interface, this is where you would do it. Get the channel one on your interface and get your mic ready that way. So we're going to do this, hit create. To make sure that we have sound, we're going to turn on the audio input, which is this, the audio input monitoring. And let's, let's mess around with it. Excellent. So if you're serious about taking your Logic Pro experience to the next level, then you can go ahead and enroll into the Logic Pro Masterclass at whyhearnamusic.com and we'll love to have you and see you over there.